the maidservants slowly wake up and begin their usual services of sweeping the yards of the arbor and presented water, flower garlands, and different ungans. Mm. The sakis look through the holes of the vines to witness the astonishing beauty of a couple at daybreak and swim in oceans of bliss. When Vrinda Dave when Vrinda Deva wakes up. She engages the parents in awakening Radhika and Mohan and songs. While Sripad, in his kingery form, sweeps the play Kunja at daybreak. Goose pimples of ecstasy erupt on her skin as she hears the sweet songs of the parrots. While the divine couple was making love at night, the learned parrots had memorized their joking romantic words. And now, at daybreak, they are giving the sakis and manjaris indescribable happiness by repeating these words. The parrots, the cuckoos, the bees, and the peacocks all are Radha and Krishna's assistants in their loving pastimes. The parrots serve them and their girlfriends and maidservants in a marvelous way by reminding them sweetly of their past sports. During their most intimate pastimes, Shamasundar tightly embraced Srimati and placed his hands on her breast. During their most intimate pastimes, Shamsundar tightly embraced Srimati and placed his hands on her breasts, making her jokingly say, Why are you striking my breasts with your nails? I am not the king of demons. Oh, Krishna, when you were a baby, you scratched the neck. Of the Trina Varta demon. Who lifted you up into the air. Thus destroying him. Do you want to kill me? in a similar way by scratching my breast and oh vidya daraja king of clever pranksters why do you hurt my breast like that i am not Putana, 
the witch you killed by sucking the life out of her breasts. You are not going to kill me like that, are you? There is another humorous meaning to this verse. The people of Raj do not know that Krishna is God. When they see Krishna's prowess while he kills some demon, they lovingly think that Lord Narayan being satisfied with Nanda Maharaja's worship has empowered Krishna to do this. This is also how they interpret Garga Muni's words Narayana Samo Gunhai Gunahi. This child is equal in qualities to Lord Narayan. To Nanda Maharaj in the Bhagavad. Sri Radhika th thinks in the same way. During your natural baby sports, you played with Putana's breasts. And when Lord Narayan's power entered you, you killed her. The same happened when the Trinavarta demon lifted you up in the air. Now you have reached adolescence. Why are you hurting my breast like that? This is dreadful. What if Lord Narayan's power enters you once more and you kill me? The parrots have memorized all these joking words. And when the maidservants sweep the yard of the Kunja, they repeat them making them relish a stream of nectar and causing goose pimples of ecstasy to erupt on their skins. Blessed are these maidservants. They can relish Radhika's sweetness like no one else. Listen, O oh lover, O oh Shama Sundar, O oh king of relishers, what is this? I see that you're scratching my neck. I'm not the king of demons. O oh, Vana Mali, O oh, crown jewel of clever pranksters, I tell you again and again, why do you hurt my breast like that? I am not Putana. The Shadi and Sukha heard Radhika speak these joking words in her nocturnal pastimes with her dear Pitavasa, Krishna. 
that are like an ocean of rasa. The sukha and shad and shadi blissfully sit on a branch of the pomegranate tree that stands in the play kunja. And they repeat these words of the loving couple in song to increase the ocean of rasa. Sri Prabodananda says, when will that morning come that I can be absorbed in listening to these prattlings while I sweep the kunja. <laughs> Thus ends verse 164. <laughs> Verse 165. May the luster of Radha's lotus feet be manifest to me either in wakefulness, dreams, or in deep sleep. Let there be no other sh no other shelter for me than Sri Radha, either in Vaikuntha or in hell. Let my mind sway on the great waves of the nectar ocean of Radha topics on an excellent terrace of a bower house on the bank of the Yamuna. May the luster of Radha's lotus feet be manifest to me either in wakefulness, dreams, or in deep sleep. Let there be no other shelter for me than Sri Radha, either in Vaikuntha or in hell. Let my mind sway on the great waves of the nectar ocean of Radha topics on an excellent terrace of a bower house <clears throat> on the bank of the Yamuna. <laughs> Fixation in Radha. In this verse, Sri Prabodananda shows <coughs> how exclusively fixed he is in Sri Radha. Let me be aware of the luster of Radha, either in wakefulness, dreams, or deep sleep. Conditioned souls have three kinds of consciousness. Wakefulness, dreaming, and deep sleep. And they cannot experience anything else.
But beyond that is the fourth stage, Turiya, or transcendence. Although the Jit Kana Jiva, the spirit soul, is itself a drop of transcendence. It cannot experience this because of being bound up by the ropes of Maya, illusion. Only persons who practice yoga, jnana, raja, or bhakti, can reach the fourth stage of consciousness. In the wakeful state, the conditioned soul enjoys material objects through the material senses, and his mind is always absorbed in thinking of these material things like wife, children, and wealth, thinking that these temporary things are real and according to his activities in this life, the soul accepts another body after death in which he can enjoy his favorite sense objects again. In this way, the stream of karma flows on. Dreams are only an imagination of the mind. In wakefulness, the senses are awake and active and think that all material objects around them are real. But in dreams, the five senses are unconscious so that impulse so that impulses from the brains are more easily received. The mind is no longer subject to all the different impulses that enter into it during the sensuous state of wakefulness. And it enters into the subtle kingdom, becoming calmer. Dreams are simply negatives of the photo-like thoughts of wakefulness. But during the dream, these negatives appear to be real and are also creating negative feelings of misery or positive feelings of joy during sleep. Dreams are the manifestations of the samskara, cultivation of the mental world. The subtle forms that are created in the mind during wakefulness by the three psychic modes uh, 
The subtle forms that are created in the mind during wakefulness by the three psychic modes, sattva, goodness, raja, passion, and tama, indolence, take solid forms during dreams. We can also dream of things we have never seen before in our lives. These things should be known as impressions from our pre previous incarnations, lives or births. The transcendental forms of God or the holy places that the devotees dream of are all real and supernatural. Srila Raghunath Das Goswami Good morning. Ah, sorry. So this oh, point uh, I would like to know more deep. Just uh, these uh, sentences. Please help. So the subtle forms, or well, I'll back up one more dreams are the manifestations of the samskara cultivation of the mental world. What we create in our life, samskara, but I effort for that in material world. I create one way of life. This is my samskara. Like I create this desire for a spiritual world, I listen that is also sanskara. And I am working in the material world and I am creating some plan there is also one sanskara. Explain. So what we see in our dreams or our, what our dreams are made of, the manifestations of our dreams are a result of our thoughts and actions throughout the day. So what we think of where our mind is, we recreate in dreams in the night or when we're sleeping. And the subtle forms of the mind are these mo these gunas. So the mode of goodness, sattva guna, the mode of passion or action, raja guna, and the mode of indolence, indolence, tama guna. When I become angry, when I become concerned, when I want to create something, is as you want. When I want to live peace, I settle. 
signals we are moving. The metal sanskara, but in my desire I get it. So that I feel. But I create, I think. I think, and I go for that. Guru there. But it's all uh, just temporary, right? Because everything made by Guna. Yeah, nobody understands. They think this material life is permanent. I am attached with that. But they don't think that is it's so many times I'm not going to leave. One day everything I will leave and go. When my soul will leave this body. Nobody understands. But this creating sanskara means creating my nature to be there. This is my creating my way of life. This is sanskara. So this is explaining to be careful. Not create bad sanskara, not create what is not yours, but you will get it. Titi. Yeah. This, this is the difference between sanskara and sukriti. Sukriti sanskara, I create by my behavior. As Sukriti means by grace, I got it. By grace, I am receiving something. And Sanskara means I am creating to live like this in my life. Because I am attached with this and I cannot. This is all my life. But we don't know so many times. My son is not my son. Maybe my friend or some other relative become my son. Maybe he is my father in previous life. He become my son. <laughs> We can also dream of things we have never seen before in our lives. These things should be known as impressions from our previous incarnations. The transcendental forms of God or the holy places that the devotees dream of are all real and supernatural. Sri Raghunath Das Goswami hardly slept at all. But if he slept, he dreamt of Radha and Krishna. Radha, here I would like to know more. Baba says, these are real and supernatural. What does it mean supernatural? Natural, super is the highest natural. When we realize that we are so, we are not body. 
and by the grace we got the our spiritual form that is supernatural this i am i am not a plastic body i am not a senses i am not animal that to behave like animal supernatural thing is this eating sleeping and doing sex even the animals are also sex so i born like animal or what supernatural thing is that i am a soul and by grace of this i have a spiritual form that is super and this i this i am and i am going to leave this body one day in 100 years maximum right If I become eighty years, so I start living in the grace of Creator. When that I have to go, I don't know. Eighty percent I use my life. I create my karma. I create my sanskara with my behavior, and that will go with me. If I do the good thing, it will go with me. The bad thing, money will not go. My power, anything will not go. My sukriti, my good karma, good behavior will go. Sanskara, what I create, that will do. Right? Clear or not? Good thing I do is this. By mercy, I do this. This is the and what I create, right, wrong thing. My sanskara, that I will bring back with. to get the result of my karma thank you so much now We are clear about what is natural and what is supernatural. We should go supernatural. You forget how we go. This Maya of Krishna is so powerful. After a few minutes, we forget what is supernatural. And that practice has to be. When we will not live with the practice and association, we will not understand supernatural. We understand the supernatural is sensible. Supernatural is what is not existing. That is supernatural. That is not in life is life in sleep. This we think supernatural, but by mercy of the saintly person, we realize this. But it's supernatural. Then that is understand. Go on. In the state of deep sleep, the gross senses and the subtle identifications, like the mind, the intelligence, consciousness, and ego, 
are all sleeping in the state of deep sleep the gross senses and the subtle identifications like the mind the intelligence consciousness and ego are all sleeping and no thoughts take place the mandukya upanishad says susputi is that state in which a sleeping person does not desire think or even dream anything anymore for example one night 14 people may be playing cards with each other 10 people in an outer circle and four people in an inner circle a light burns in the middle to illuminate everything there's a light in the middle so two circles one of four people on the outside one of ten people and in the middle of those two circles there's a light a light burns in the middle to illuminate everything after playing for a long time the ten outer people fall asleep but the inner four people continue playing after some time these four also fall asleep and only the central light keeps on burning the five active senses and the five knowledge acquiring senses are the ten outer card players and if they stay awake along with the four inner players the mind intelligence consciousness and ego this state is called wakefulness when the ten senses fall asleep but the four inner players stay awake that state is called dreaming and when even the inner four players fall asleep that is called deep sleep baladev vidya bhushana writes in his govindya govinda basya on the vedanta in a state of deep sleep, the jiva has merged with Brahman, but is not aware of it. Shripad says, let Radha's lotus feet be manifest to me in wakefulness, dreams and in deep sleep when I'm awake let Radharani always play in my mind
instead of all the illusory tricks of the perishable material world, O Radhe, I am your maidservant. I have an eternal relationship with you. Let me not mix with this external world. Make my mind strong so that it will not be distracted by external matters. that have nothing to do with you. Let me not remember anything else but your names, forms, qualities, and pastimes. Let your lotus feet always stay even in my prajna chaitanya consciousness merged in deep sleep just as a person who awakens deep sleep sinks I had a blissful sleep. Let me think, aha, how wonderful is the sweetness of Radha's lotus feet. When I awaken from deep sleep, how, how beautiful is that consciousness? Even to think such a state is blissful, actually having that consciousness. Then Shripad says, I have no other shelter but Radha, either in Vaikuntha or in hell. The sweet Braj devotees never desire to go to Vaikuntha, and even if they go there, the majestic vision of the Lord cannot but Kumar, the hero of Sanantan Goswami's Bhagavad is the best example of that. The majestic vision of Lord Vishnu in Vaikuntha could not mitigate his feelings of separation from his beloved Sriman Madana Gopal Krishna of Raj Sripad says even if I go to Vaikuntha sweet Radharani will play in my mind the vast luxury of Vaikuntha will not be able 
to cover over my sweet remembrance of Sri Radhika. Nada, nada. Chida. Yeah, here is a very touched by heart. This uh, luxury of Vaikuntha, if we are unconscious, this very luxury of Vaikuntha can easily cover our sweet remembrance of Sri Radhika. But here, Sri Pada beautiful place, the vast luxury of Vaikuntha will not be able to cover. This should be our prayer, I feel. Opulence cannot cover the sweetness. This is the meaning. Don't go in the words. Vaikuntha is opulence. Opulence not cover the sweetness. Church. Yeah, what will you cover in Vaikuntha? In this sweetness. Mm -hmm. So here I'm not clear what will cover her sweetness in Baikunta. Why? Never <laughs> Yes. Kichori, what's, can you say your question again? I'm, I, was, I was a little confused. Thank you so much this opportunity. I'm not clear still. In Baikunta, what to cover sweetness of Rada if it's not the cause of uh, open? Um, so I feel Sripad is saying that even, even if he goes to Vaikuntha, the land of vast luxury, Gurudev is saying opulence, then this won't be able to cover the sweet mood of Vrindavan. So the opulence, this feeling of awe and reverence can't cover this sweet feeling, this mood of Sri Rad of Radharani and Vrindavan. Does that yeah. answer your question? Yeah. Maybe I from your sharing I understand is my understanding is this Vaikuntha is opposite from feelings. Like Aishwarya, fear, position, little far from love. Not just opulence, we imagine opulence, not like this, this like status, position, some ego covers the sweetness of Radhika, sweetness of Green Dava. Like this Mahatmaji. Yeah, you got it. Bye, Mahatmaji. But please, Adam, please read us. <laughs> I need your guidance. Oh no. 
Thank you, my dear. Yeah. One, one more paragraph. Okay? Then Shripad says, even if I go to hell, I will not have any other shelter than Sri Radhika. Actually, a person engaged in spiritual practice never goes to hell. The Padma Purana says, The Lord may desire that the devotee take birth again. But that is only for the sake of his service or for the further development of love for him. Srimad Vishwanath Chakravarti comments as follows. Even offenseless devotees who want to relish prema may have to wait a little until they attain the Lord. For instance, Bharata had to take another three births. Even offensive devotees that may have some sinful reactions left over in them because they do not regularly practice bhajan will not go to hell after they leave their bodies. Yamaraja, the king of death, orders his messengers, don't bring Madhusudana's devotees to me, for I punish only the non-devotees, not the Vaishnavas. Although he is an eternal associate of the Lord, Shripad humbly thinks as a result of my karma it is inevitable that I will have to go to hell O oh, Radhe please if I go to hell then let me not forget your lotus feet there. May the luster of your lotus feet illuminate the dark cave of my heart there also. I may suffer in hell. I may enjoy in heaven. Or... I may be dwelling in the Lord's blissful Vaikuntha abode. I don't mind as long as my mind does not waver from your lotus feet. Finally, Shripad says, My body may be anywhere. But let my mind always oscillate on the great waves of the nectar ocean of Radha talks on a lovely terrace of a bower house on the bank of the Yamuna where Radha and Mohan play their wonderful pastimes. Thus ends verse 165. 
We, we have a Guru Puja today, after 8.30, so we have to be ready. You read Kishori, other can be listened. Yeah, happy Guru Puja. So, yeah, by Guru Devazumashi, we try to continue to read. Just now, this verse said, Prapa Sripada said. May our mind does not waver from her lotus feet. We try to keep. Sri Radha Sasudani Di, verse 166. Then, can I fan Radha and Krishna after they started sweating yeah. from the great endeavor of love making? making them blissfully close, close their eyes while they enjoy the cool breeze I create on the terrace of a new vine cottage on the bank of the Yamuna. Read again. When can I find Radha and Krishna after they started Sweating from the great endeavor of love making, making them blissfully close their eyes while they enjoy the cool breeze. I create on the terrace of a new vine cottage on the bank of the Yamuna. Panning Radha and Murari. Commentary. In the spring, Brindavan's naturally beauty, naturally beautiful trees and vines. In the spring, Brindavan's naturally beautiful trees and vines are filled with Sweetly smiling, freshly blooming, and sprouting flowers. In Brindaban, flowers are smiling, blooming, and sweetly. 
What an amazing beauty. Basanta Lakshmi. Basanta Lakshmi means the goddess of vernal beauty. She creates what amazing beauty. At the end of the winter, the spring comes, making all the flowers in the for forest blossom again. All the bumblebees of Brindavan come to relish the open flowers again and Shuka and Shari and Kakos sing sweetly on the freshly sprouting branches of the mango trees. How beautiful! The bank of the Yamunas is. How beautiful the bank of Yamuna is when the spring arrives. On the bank of the Yamuna is a new cottage made of vines while where where Radha and Krishna are enjoying themselves. Shripada, in his kinkari form, looks in through the holes in the vines to admire the sweetness of these pastimes. The divine couple feel very inspired to make love when Radha and Mohan see this romantic place at this romantic moment. And the eyes of the maid servant become like fishes that briefly swim in the ocean of these wonderful pastimes. Yesterday, Gurudev shared like a Mahababa is like a waves. A lot of rasa comes. Here, Kinkari's eyes become like fishes that blissfully swim in the ocean of these waves. After Radha and Mohan made love. The divine couple comes out the kunja and sits down on a jeweled throne on the outside terrace. 
They breathe deeply. And their bodies are adorned with sweat drop of fatigue. So, the maid servants start fanning them. In such an expert way, that Rada and Murari can smell each other's fragrance. And the sweat drops on their bodies are dried up. With the corners of their eyes, they lick the nectar of each other's forms. With their skins, they sense each other's nectarian touch. And with their nose, they smell each other's fragrance. After this, the maid servant, who is devotional service personified, serves cool, sweet syrup and better leaves. The divine couple pleases each other's ears the divine couple pleases each other's ears by speaking them with each other's nectarian talks and satisfy their tongues with the delicious served by the maid servant. In this way, they enjoy all of their five senses and rather Mohan closed their eyes out of bliss and satisfaction. What a wonderful service. How sweet are the forms of the divine couple to be folded for the maid servant. How the maid servant, how blessed, how blessed the maid servant she is. This is the end of verse 166. We will read verse again. When can I farm Radha and Krishna after they started sweating from the great endeavor of love making, making them blissfully close their eyes while they enjoy the cool breeze. I create on the terrace of a new vine cottage on the bank of the Yamuna. Yes, 
जय श्री राधे Is there someone who feels some share, some come to your heart, our dears? So maybe we can stop here today. Just the Guru Dev said they have, not they, we have. Our Guru Puja today. We can keep this beautiful meditation for today by our sweet Parama Guru Dev, Sri Radha Govinda Das Babaji Maharaj's mercy, all Guru Parampara's mercy, our dearest Guru Dev Sadhu Maharaj's and All our families, all of you, sisters and brothers, and their families, Matthew. Thank you so much. <laughs>